Hello, hello here, and I'm here with my UFC 253 recap video on losing daylight faster, so I'm going to try to get through this. All right, uh, UFC 253 happened last night. I hope you saw it. It was um, an, an amazing event. Actually, lived up to all the hype. How we, hype. I'm trying to go so fast, I can't even talk as normal. Uh, lived up to all of the hype. We had two title fights on the line. Again, let's go ahead and get into it. I made five picks. I got three out of five. So, whew, I'll take that right above 500 and getting into it. First up, I got this pick. I chose Hakeem Duwari to get the victory over Zabara uh, Tukivav, and he did. He won a split decision victory, and I completely agree. It was basically 1-1 going into the third round, and it was Hakeem who got his third win. He got a takedown. Also, he landed the more devastating shots. There was a near finish there. He uh, was initiating the exchanges. He was the one holding the center of the octagon. He was the one pushing the pace more. He clearly won that third round. I think that's what won him the fight, honestly, because this was a very back and forth fight, very good fight, way to open up a good card, but I totally agree, so who would you like to see Hakeem Duwazi fight next? Next up, uh, I got this pick, I chose Caitlin Vieira to beat Sajara Eubanks, and she did, I think this was a unanimous decision, though, correct me if I'm wrong, pretty sure it was a unanimous decision, she did not finish her, however, she did win. The first round there, actually, the first round was just super, super close, they were both the sharing the uh, center of the octagon, both landing hard shots, neither one really trying to uh, even go for any grappling or any takedowns until the very end of that first round in which Caitlin got a takedown. I think that sealed her the round. And as the fight went on, she got stronger. She started to land more often. She actually landed more takedowns, was able to hold it down, ground and pound. Great win and great back in the win column for Caitlin Vieira, who's always kind of been one to watch. She had a little slip up before this fight, but now she's back on track. Who would you like to see? Uh, um, Caitlin Vienna in the 135 pound defended division. There's really no clear number one contender there for Amanda Nunez's second belt. <laughs> so, who would you like to see her fight next? Next, lots of great fights in that division. Now, next, <clears throat> next up, I'm getting lipstick all over the place. I'm just moving way too fast. But next up, I did not get this pick. I chose Kai Kara Francis to beat Brandon uh, Royval. And I knew it would be close. I was kind of going back and forth. But I said, you know what? Let me go ahead and stick with the pick. But Brandon came out. I mean, he was all over. And he's real big. It's the flyweight division. He's real big. Not only is he tall, but he actually looks pretty thick. So I have to see what, what kind of weight cutting he's doing there. He must be cutting upwards of 15 pounds or so. Because not only is he tall, but he actually looks uh, not thin. He doesn't look skinny and much bigger than Kai Kara Fence. He was just all over it. In the first round, though, there wasn't a legal knee from him to Kai. There was a big uh, punch from Kai to him. Lots of action in that first round. Uh, uh, he ended up trying to get several submission holds on Kai Kara in that first round, and it didn't work out until, I believe it was the second, oh, I want to say third round. Pretty sure this ended in the third round. Oh, my God. Pretty sure this ended in the third round. I just blanked there, so someone correct me if I'm wrong. But this ended in the third round where Kai Car fans actually um, went for a takedown. And we saw Brandon jump on, to, uh, basically jump onto his uh, front guard uh, guillotine. And he basically, um, Kai was trying to shake him off, couldn't shake him off. Brandon was able to get him down to the ground. He still has him in the guillotine. He's able to adjust. And he actually got Kai Car fans to tap. So this was a great win, great fight. He looked nice, strong, durable. Super active with his jiu-jitsu on top, uh, nice angles, fast, hard hitting, got a nice chin. This one, I think he's one to watch. I think Brandon Royval is one to watch. So, now on to the first of the uh, title fights. And I did not get this pick, but I'm totally okay because I like both guys anyway. And this was a great fight. Nice surprise victory because I think a lot of people thought the person I picked was going to win. <laughs> <laughs> and no, UFC light heavyweight champion, Mr. Jan Blahovic. He totally beat uh, Dominic Reyes. I think a lot of people thought this was Dominic Reyes is like, um, this was his night. This is his crowning uh, of, of his crown, that, of his uh, title that we kind of thought was just his. Well, everyone but Jan. <laughs> Jan was like, uh-uh. From the beginning, the very first round, Jan won the first round. He was the one landing the hardest shots. He went to the body often and early. I said they both should do that. He was the one that managed to do that. He and he broke uh, Dominic's ribs. I mean, correct me if I'm wrong, but I did see reports saying that he did break Dominic Reyes' ribs. And you saw the bruise by the end of the first round. It was so ugly. And I knew he was more powerful. But my goodness, he's more powerful everywhere. The kicks, the knees, just... He pushed him at one point. I mean, he's so much more powerful in everything that he threw. 
uh, Dominic was still faster, but honestly, the fact that Jan landed first, went to the body early and often had Dominic shook, and then he lost that first round. Now, into the second round, he tried to come out the way he did against John Jones in the first and the second with uh, lots of offense, lots of kicks. He tried to get loose, and he landed some shots there, but then it was more of the same. It, uh, actually, Jan landed a kick which kind of shelled him up again, got him more hesitant. Now they're going back and forth, and it was actually uh, Dominic who was kind of on a good little stretch there before he caught a left straight to the chin, wobbled them, chicken dance legs, wobble, 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 <laughs> until he stumbled down, got him got on top, uh, ground a pound, ref stopped the fight, and no! Yeah, Blahovich, and he totally deserved it. Some people are saying it was an early stoppage. If you look at the fight, the replay, Dominic did not uh, contest. He did not get up and say, hey, what you doing? He, none of that. None of that. No protesting. None of that. Also, oh, excuse me. One of the hits that landed before the final left that actually started at the beginning of the end broke Dominic's nose, and you saw it real time. Hit him in the face, and the nose went poop, 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 poop. So he broke his nose, broke a rib. The fight was over. It was not an early stoppage. It was a good stoppage. Dominic himself did not protest. So I completely agree with this victory. This was a great victory for Jan Blachowicz and John Jones having a little fun saying maybe I should go back and get my belt. And Jan right after the fight saying, hey, John Jones, come fight me because he's actually never fought John. Now, do you guys think that John Jones might come back down to the light heavyweight division to fight Jan Blachowicz now that he's champion? I do not. I think he's too busy already uh, gaining weight for the heavyweight division, and you can't just go up and down, up and down now that John's like 33 years old. But I think that the drama and the back and forth is fun, so I'll have more of it. But now, we have a new champ. Uh, lightweight, light heavyweight division is back on track. Who do you think should be next? We have a lot of important fights actually coming up, so there's probably some fights that need to happen. So you guys give me your ideas of what should happen, where we should go from here. Now, main event, and I got this pick. I chose, oh, excuse me, and still, UFC middleweight champion, Mr. Israel, the last style bender. I took my time to say his first name right. I hope you got that. He successfully defeated or defended his belt against Paulo Costa, and I think he did it easier than any of us thought. Me, myself, Dana White, everyone. I think we all thought this would be a bit more difficult, probably last a little bit longer, but this ended in the second round. Let's go ahead and get into it, and it was fairly easy. Uh, people, Paulo Costa, you know, we knew he was being, but we thought he would get in his face early and often, try to go to the body, try to go to his legs, take away that power, maybe even go to the ground, use that black belt to do jiu-jitsu. He didn't really do, I don't know if he was, he was trying to be measured. I know he didn't want to uh, blow his gas tank because he has five rounds here, so I get that being measured, but he just, he let Israel get comfortable quick, fast, in a hurry. Israel started attacking that lead leg quick, fast, in a hurry, and you started to see uh, the damage, the effects of that. It, by the end of the first round, you saw his mobility was clearly hampered. Uh, biting behind that jab, he was so quick. He landed a kick to the face, and that actually opened Paulo up by the end of the first round. The angles, the way he got in and out, and then you saw, saw Paulo try to talk some smack, try to get in his head, like, fight me, fight me, as if uh, Israel wasn't doing anything, as if Israel wasn't doing anything. Oh, he was doing a lot. He just wasn't standing there and letting you hit him in the face. Is that what you want? You want him to just to stand there? Because he did a whole lot of offense. Because here we come in the second round. <laughs> Again, more to that that lead leg, terrified that lead leg. Now we're having some body shots here. Now Israel's real comfortable, and he did not play around in this fight. He actually kept. Uh, um, he doesn't always necessarily have his hands up, but he didn't stick his chin out there. He wasn't talking smack. He kept moving, kept the head moving, kept the angles. He didn't play around here. And by the uh, about halfway into the second round, I believe it was, he actually landed with the left as well. It was a left. Hook. We saw Paulo was kind of, I guess he was trying to duck it, but he was kind of low because it was basically would have been a hook to the body. So it was the left hook that actually landed clean to the temple. It skinned the temple, poof, on the temple, dropped Paulo Costa. He got on top with some elbows, uh, some ground and pound. The fight was over. He rushed off the fight. Great stoppage, great win for Israel Adesanya, who made it look easy. Easy. So, oh, and afterwards, because he was ground and pounding him and Paulo had gave up his back, he basically, like, uh, dry humped him on the back there, I guess, to be like, you know, F off or you're my B-I-T-C-H or whatever you'd like to say that was. But he did that little showboat afterwards and uh, talked his little smack afterwards. And, yeah, Israel Adesanya, still champ. <laughs>
easier than any of us thought it was going to be. So let me know how you did on your picks, any injury updates, any controversy there, who you think everyone should fight next. It was a great event. If you haven't thought, please go back and check it out. Uh, follow me on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. All the subscribe, like, Snapchat. Talk to me. Take care.